Hi, I'm Rick Hoffman. I'm a technical marketing engineer working on the enablement team for software and solutions here at Ruben Networks. I'm glad I got that out. We're starting a brand new series on RESTful API automation. We're going to take you line by line, step by step, and we're going to layer this information episode by episode. And we're going to take you, you seeker of knowledge, you, I know who you are. We're going to take you from knowing absolutely nothing about RESTful API programming to knowing something about it. It's up to you. It's as far as you want to go. So this episode, we're going to cover like an overview of everything we're going to talk about in subsequent episodes. We're going to go deep dive into every one of these little subject areas. So join me in this episode and all subsequent episodes, and we are going to dive into the world of RESTful API programming. Thank you for joining me. Let's have some fun. When you think about it, it's all about a conversation that needs to be had. So two things need to talk to each other. Um, and to do that, one thing really needs to have some sort of proof. So this could be your application that you're going to write that wants to talk to an endpoint. Well, the first time you try talking to that endpoint, you might get rejected because it needs to know who that, that requesting service is. It needs to have some sort of identity. So we put in our credentials and we say, can't I have a token through the process, some back-end authentication? We get a 200. All is good. So here's the token. Well, now all we need to do is take that token and put it in another API, Application Program Interface, and we'll do this thing called an HTTP verb called get, and we're going to get some data, but we're going to put our token in that request. So the service will see it and say, hmm, this token looks familiar. Uh, the endpoint is real. And I'm just going to go ahead and take the results of that endpoint and send them back with a 200 response code. Now, um, nothing scary here. It's just a simple uh, conversation. And all we're doing is proving who we are. And every time we want to use another API on that system, we simply return the token as our a means of identification, okay? So um, what we're talking about here are just application program interface. These are a fixed set of endpoints that exist inside each of these applications that we can use the language of the web, these HTTP verbs, to get information out of one and put information in another. So um, nothing scary here. And we're going to use something like, well, not something like, we're going to use Python to do this. And I'm not here to teach you Python, but I'm going to show you how to use Python to get this done. Now, where do we usually learn about APIs? Well, if we go into most modern APIs, they have this thing called the Swagger interface, where it's a very graphical environment. And if you give it your token, you can get real return data back from this response. So I'm looking at this Branch Health V1 site. You can see on the right-hand side, this is what the response would be like from that API. Now, this might look a little strange. This is just JSON data serialization. So it allows machines to communicate very complex objects back and forth with these key value pairs. And it also, because of the way it's structured, it allows us to read them, even though this information really isn't um, intended for us humans, it's really for another machine. So we use the Swagger interface to learn about these API endpoints. And based upon the parameters I send that endpoint, I could get some sort of response back that I could do something with. That's the Swagger interface. This one in particular is a Ruby Central Swagger. Um, we'll show you that here a little later. Now we're going to use the language of the web. Now this thing called HTTP is just Hypertext Transfer Protocol and you use it every time you go and use Google to search the web. It's just the same stuff here. So um, we have these things called verbs that allow us to communicate 
with other entities. And we can do a handful of things here, but really um, in the wild, I usually see get, um, post, and then delete. Uh, put and patch, I don't see that much of, but you can see what these verbs are doing. If you're getting it, you're just simply reading it. If you're posting, you're actually creating like a record in the database. When you're deleting it, you are deleting that thing, right? Um, like I said, put and patch, I don't see a lot. You might see that in your journey, but with these three things, get, post, and delete, I can complete all four CRUD operations, and that stands for create, read, update, and delete. So we can use these three verbs and accomplish just about anything we want to do. Um, your mileage may vary. You may find put and patch are handy for you. I'm just giving you my experience. Now, we talked about this return code, and we use this a lot because when we send a request to an API endpoint and we get data back, we're going to want to look at what kind of data we got back. We want to we want to ensure that we're actually getting a positive result back. And usually that means a level 200. So that means it's okay. Here's your data. I made the data. I created the record. Level 400, on the other hand, is you. You have a problem. You don't have the right credentials. You made a mistake in the URL. There's something wrong in your code. But rest assured, if you get 400, it's because you are doing something wrong. Level 500, on the other hand, means that it's further upstream and it's not you. So um, you can complain here. Now, what we get back from an API call is this stuff called JavaScript object notation. Now, I said this was intended for other machines to read, but we are developers and we want to know what's really in all this information. So we know how to transform it and process it further on down the line. Luckily for us, there are road signs. Now, the square brackets, we look for the first square bracket and the last square bracket, and we everything in between is just a list of things, thing one, thing two, and we can check it by using um, Python len to tell us how many things are in there. And we can go to the exact spot in a list by giving it the identifier or the locator. And here I'm using my list too. That gives me the third thing in the list because lists start with zero. And lists could be lists of dictionaries with dictionaries containing lists of dictionaries. Dictionaries on the other hand are key value pairs. And we're um, basically taking a key like this, it's called color, and I'm giving it a value orange. So I could describe a very complex object using key value pairs, but we can check its length and we can also go to a very specific key. My dictionary color would return the word orange or the string orange if that's what was stored in that particular key. Now it could say my dictionary color and it could be equals router or switch. It's just they don't have to match. I just like, I like them to match, but it's just a placeholder. So I'm saying color, key, orange, value. Okay. And dictionaries may contain lists of dictionaries with dictionaries of lists of lists of dictionaries. So we always look for the curly braces when we're looking at a dictionary. So first curly brace, all the way to the next curly brace, everything inside there is a dictionary. Now, my hip tip of the week is to take it easy on yourself. Um, look at your data. I like to just kind of like copy and paste this. So I'll select a chunk out and I'll paste it in some sort of um, editor and I can space it all out like this and I can see what I'm dealing with. So I know exactly what keys are available to me in that dictionary and what information I can address by what key. There's a hundred ways of doing this. This is just the way I do it. Okay, we're going to run for the demo and it's a pretty simple demo. We're just going to use a web browser and log into the Swagger interface out on Aruba Central and we're going to 
issue an API and get some information back. And we're going to learn about the API through Aruba Central using the Swagger API interface. Then we're going to mimic that same um, conversation in a Python script using a token that we'll get from the system. And we'll show you where all that stuff's at here in just one second. So I just want to point out in the script, we're going to take all the central info, the base URL and the access token, wrap it up in this word called central. And then we're really going to pipe it down to the API call itself. So everything in central gets um, hooked up with the monitoring V2 networks uh, endpoint URL. And then the information from that API request is put in this base response. And we'll see that later. So that's what the demo is going to go through. So let's just get you over to the screen where we can see what's going on with the API. All right, now here is that Python script that we're talking about. You can see I'm going to use the, the monitoring API, our monitoring version 2 networks. That's the uh, the endpoint we're going to call. Here is my base token of my, or my token of my base URL. Uh, don't worry, that token will be dead here quickly. They, the, the tokens die quick in Aruba Central, so you always have to be refreshing your tokens. Um, down here is the call, the API call itself, where we're going to get this information. But I'm using this thing called PyCentral right here. And PyCentral is a Python binding that's available to us out on PyPy.org that has thousands of lines of code in it that make it so much easier to interact with the Ruby Central's API because they handle a lot of the heavy lifting in this Python binding. So it makes it very easy for us to communicate. Okay, and uh, we're actually talking to the Python binding, and the Python binding is talking to Central's API. So that's really what's going on when we import PyCentral, and that's why I like using Python to do automation, because it makes it super easy, because all these libraries are pre-written for us. Moving on, so let's go and say I'm going to go over here to Aruba Central, and if I go to the bottom of Aruba Central, find Organizations, I'm going to go under platform integration. You'll find REST API here. This is the link to get to the Swagger interface. Now, you're going to want to generate a token and all that stuff. I'm not going to show you that here. Um, I'll show you where you can find it. Matter of fact, if you simply go up here to the developer, uh, devhub, arubanetworks.com, you're going to find central APIs and guides. And this is going to walk you all the way through this but I'm going to cover this later on, so um, we'll 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 get to this. But here's getting started with the REST API, how to get a token, obtaining a token, using the Swagger interface. There's also a section down here on getting started with Python. So DevHub, Developer, all that stuff, great resources for you to use to do this. Now getting back to this, we're going to go open up our and we're going to click there to open Swagger. I already have it open right here. And I have my token installed right here. I click the little arrow that I'm good to go. So here is this link, monitoring V2 networks. That's what we saw in the Python script. And this is what we're going to do. So if we um, can, we can actually drive this endpoint by coming down here and clicking try this. Um, we give it the right parameters in these boxes and click try this. We will get real return from our system that we have our token for. So right there's um, a response, a sample response of what we should get. So if we go down and actually try driving this uh, API, boom, we'll get this. And it sends back, this was the URL requested. So I have my base URL, and then it finished it up with monitoring V2 networks for the endpoint. The response body this is the JSON stream we got back here with two keys, count networks, and network has a list that's empty. Here is my response code. We talked about that. That's my 200 and a whole bunch of header information right here. So, and this will come in handy later when we start passing things through headers. Um, we'll dive into this as we go. So that's exactly what happened on Aruba Central. So will the same thing happen with our, our script? 
will we be able to get monitoring v2 networks and get the same information back that we just got so let's give it a shot we will say python 3 and we'll call it t.py is our script and if we run it you can see that we got our base url we have our endpoint here's the return code 200 that says everything is okay here were all those headers i showed you but down here was the message that we got back the json string that says our two keys count networks and the networks is an empty list now this is a real simple example of this and we're going to get further down into the weeds as we go okay that wraps up the demo now I want you to know if you're going through this and you have some sort of error message or something doesn't look right, we'll simply take that and paste it into Google and search because I'll guarantee you, you're not the first person to have that problem. I have already had it. So there's, there's answers out there to just about every single problem you have. Always, always Google the error message. It'll help you out immensely. And if you're developing specifically for Aruba products, there's developer arubanetworks.com, devhub arubanetworks.com. I'm using those resources to deliver this content. Get yourself an Aruba Central account. You will need it to have access to the Swagger interface and to the API itself. And if you're looking to learn a higher level programming language like Python, JavaScript, Flask, whatever it is, udemy.com, affordable and it'll ramp you up quickly. So thank you for joining this episode. We look forward to seeing you in the next episode of Aruba RESTful Automation Series.